Hi, I'm Mike Thompson, and check this out. My first aluminum pour. I'm making aluminum muffins. Wait, let's back up a bit and show you how I got to this point. For this part, we need to go back about a week. But to go back all the way to the beginning, we need to go back three months. It's been a lot of R&D up to this point, but it's so worth it. So I'm gonna show you how I made this simple foundry. My first mistake was not using insulating fire brick. Acme had fire brick in stock, but it's not the insulating kind. I thought I could make it work. Well, it worked, but inefficiently. So make sure you get this lightweight white insulating brick instead of this heavy yellow speckled brick. The white brick's so soft you can scratch it with your finger. These bricks are the K23s, which is what my local refractory supplier had. This means that they're good to 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. I would have rather had the 26s, but that's a special order someday. And the 23s work just fine for aluminum. I decided on a smaller one for this version and ended up only using 10 bricks. I also only used butt joints, so I didn't have to cut any. I laid out my bricks and drew the lines for the coil grooves. It didn't take very long to gouge them out. Next up was the cage. I made it in much the same way as my previous foundry. I cut a bunch of nine and a half inch pieces of one by eighth inch steel. Then I welded it in place around my bricks. Now the odd thing is that the bricks are nine by four and a half by two and a half. This means that I'd have a rectangular space and I really wanted a square one. So I moved two of the bricks out a quarter inch so I'd have an internal space four and a half inches square and nine inches tall. So to make the cage, I had to carve grooves from the metal bars in the top and bottom of two of my bricks. The bottom of the foundry and lid also didn't align with the walls because of this odd dimension. So my cage looks a bit funny, but it works. I welded some nuts on the cage rings and made some tie rods to hold it all together. A nice feature about carving the two side walls is that it gave the metal something to pull against. The bricks are all held together with compression and no fastener penetrates into any brick. It probably wouldn't hold anyway since they're so soft. The lid was designed in SolidWorks using sketch blocks like I did with my first foundry. I wasn't super happy with my first lid design and so I did this one differently and it's based on a four bar linkage and works perfectly. I didn't want bricks to ever slide past each other because they wear down so fast when you rub them. This lid goes up before it goes back out of the way. I also made a little latch for this lid because my other foundry fell open a couple of times while I was rolling it around. A piece of all thread as an axle and some six inch plastic wheels allow it to roll around. The wheels don't melt on this foundry because the bricks insulate so well that the cage doesn't get hot to the touch. A couple of nuts welded onto the front allow these front leg bolts to be adjusted up and down and a set of wooden feet make it nice. My first foundry used two coils in a horizontal helix inside the walls and the coils tended to fall out of the slots once they heated and expanded. They shorted out several times and when they touched and I had to replace three coils, it was a mess. I even tried screwing them into place and that worked somewhat but they still jostled around when I moved the foundry and eventually shorted out. The new version has a single coil which I stretched to 70 inches and then ran in vertical grooves. The grooves were easily carved with a circular file and no grinder was needed like with the Acme fire brick. The coils still fell out once they stretched, so I bent some steel staples and pressed them into the slots, and they finally stay in place. Whatever you use to hold your coils in, it has to keep the adjacent coils from shorting out. Staples are ideal because they're so small and don't touch anything besides a single loop of the coil. I couldn't run a metal tension ring around the inside because it would create a short all around and burn out the coils. I ended up using the full length of one heating coil, and not the two-thirds length that I showed you in a previous video. The color temperature problem only occurs in open air. Once the coils are inside the bricks and closed in the furnace, they come up to full color temperature. The coils were connected to two pieces of all thread, which I tapered with a drill and a sander. The coils are left hand threaded, so they can't just screw onto the threads. So with the tapered pins, they push on and grip nicely. The pins are bolted into the bottom of the base, and the holes for the pins were easily drilled with drill bits. The brains were all attached to the bottom because I didn't have a good way to insulate the electrical terminals before. With everything on the bottom, they can't be touched. I welded a U-bolt onto the frame so I could attach the electrical cable. 
I didn't have any more terminals, so I hose clamped the wires to the all thread, and it's perfect. Then, two more brackets for the solid state relay. That's what turns the power on and off to maintain temperature. There are no electrical contacts inside to wear out, and the relay is controlled by this little PID controller over here. Uh, this is the Inkbird ITC100VH, and it's the only time that I've ever clicked on a banner ad. Skynet knew I was shopping for one, and it looked like it would work. Now I also had to get a K-type thermocouple because the one that it came with couldn't stand the heat. The documentation for this Inkbird device is rather confusing and wasn't originally written in English, so it doesn't make a lot of sense, but luckily whatever default setting is on works nicely. And Inkbird has a whole downloadable user manual online, but like I said, it's not wonderfully helpful. The controller and relay require 110 volt input on this white cord, and the heating coils are 220. I didn't have a four prong plug, so I didn't have an easy way to get 110 for the controller and relay, and that's why I have two separate plugs. It's slightly inconvenient. The K-type thermocouple is set into a hole in the lid and protrudes about three quarters of an inch on the inside. Now that the foundry was functioning, I needed a crucible. My first crucible was a map gas cylinder with bolts welded on for transport and a ring for tipping. A wise man told me that it was too thin to hold up for very long, and he gave me a four inch pipe with a cap welded to the bottom. I welded on bolts and a ring like before, and used this in my first foundry. The first foundry was big. This new one is small. The crucible wouldn't fit. So I plasma cut some metal and welded up a new one. This one is a tight fit on purpose, but it was too tight. And during testing, the foundry got up to 750C and the coils expanded and shorted out on the crucible. This is what led to the staples holding the coils in, and it led me to making a smaller crucible. Lock washers welded on top allow me to grip it with this quarter inch rod gripper that I made, and nuts serving as legs allow my other tool to grip it and tip it. The clearances were still too tight, so I couldn't use bolts and a ring handling method as before. This new method works great and doesn't allow the crucible to slip out of control at all. Not that the other methods did either. I was also told by the wise man that in order to melt all the cans that I had been crushing and saving, that I had to have a puddle to start with to protect them from the oxygen, or else I'd just have a bunch of thin aluminum oxide, which looks like this and it's not useful at all. So I went to the salvage yard and got some scrap cast parts. I busted them all up and had a blast. Cast aluminum works better than can aluminum because the alloys are different. Can aluminum is designed for deep drawing and not casting, so it doesn't work as well, at least not without a starting puddle to shield it from the oxygen. And that's how I got to the point where I can make aluminum muffins. I'm going to convert my other foundry into propane because I need to melt some other stuff at higher temperatures. Uh, but that's another video. Or two. I hope this helps get you started and helps you avoid making some of the mistakes that I made. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.